All right guys, welcome to your one week ACT cramming session. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss why it's still possible for you to improve your ACT score, even with one week left, and how exactly I've seen students do it. There are certain three do's that I recommend you make sure you actually do to keep the most progress possible, and three don'ts that you should most definitely avoid to avoid wasting time, wasting energy, and also wasting practice exams. Please, again, I'm gonna make it clear again, do not do these things, because it's just gonna waste your time and it's just going to not result in any improvement, right? So let's get started with the don'ts because you wanna first know what to avoid. The first thing that I recommend you do not do over this next week is to take practice exams without timing. A lot of students do this and it seems like you know an innocent strategy when you're starting out. You just wanna get a feel for what the test is like. You wanna get used to the content, but there's no point in getting used to, to the content if you're not doing it with timing. Uh, you're actually wasting a practice exam. You're wasting a chance to see what your score would have been if you took the exam. Just do it with timing. And if you wanna review your, if you wanna review content, just do it after. That's something you should do anyway. You should be reviewing your practice exams, but at least try to make use of that exam like it was a real test by doing it with timing. If you don't do it with timing, uh, then it's just going to be a full waste of the exam. And you're gonna and you're gonna end up getting used to the content anyway as you practice more and more. Also, if you're someone that's thinking, oh, you know, I wanna kinda ease myself into the timing, you know, then you can still do that. You can have a more generous timing strategy. Like for example, instead of on reading, taking you know nine minutes per passage, let's say you do 10 or 11 minutes per passage and kind of take an L on that last one, you can still do that strategy and make sure that you don't just go over on that last passage, that you actually take an L and you figure out a guessing strategy for that last passage, so that, that, cause that, that's something that you can actually use on your exam. So the whole timing aspect of even guessing within a short amount of time, that's something that's gonna impact your score. You wanna see what impact it makes and you wanna see how you can develop that, right? You wanna figure out every element of what could go wrong when it comes to time and uh, content and make sure that you're practicing that from day one. So do not take practice exams without timing. Please do it with timing because every little detail in this specific scenario where you're practicing with timing, it makes a difference and it counts, right? That's the first thing. Take your exams without timing. Do not take them without timing. The next thing that I have is uh, do not completely change your strategy on any particular section the night before the exam. You wanna experiment with different strategies, and this is something that I'll get to later in the video, but if you find like, oh, that's a cool strategy for like a way to skim a passage or to read or to do something or to time yourself, don't do a complete 180 on your strategy or completely change your main strategy uh, for a particular section the night before because that you didn't have a chance to practice that or really see if it works for you. Maybe you just did it once on a practice exam and it worked all right. Sure, that's fine. Not the ideal scenario. You usually want to do it a few times, but if you just saw it one time and you want to try it, that's probably not the way to go. I've seen students that have even used our videos and they, they've been like, oh, your strategy sounds so helpful and I'm going to use it. Um, but they go into the exam without having practiced the strategy and they find like, oh, I tried it and uh, my score was actually worse than what it was before. So the strategies, the strategies we have in our videos, they can definitely help you. They should definitely help you if you practice them. But if you don't try them, we have different strategies for different students and you might have just chosen the wrong one uh, or you didn't see how you could apply it for your specific needs. So you need to make sure that you are trying the strategies before you use them, okay? At least once or twice. So do not just do a 180 degree turn or completely change your strategy for like a, a reading skimming method or a particular timing method, you know, just the night before. And we'll talk about how to experiment with, uh, you know, experiment with these strategies towards the end of the video, all right? Next thing that I have, the last don't of the three is to not take a whole practice exam or don't do a whole bunch of work the night before the test. You want your Friday night to be the least stressful and the least busy night of, uh, of, of the week. Meaning that, you know, between now and Thursday, and maybe even, you know, a little bit during Friday, you put in the bulk of your work. That's where you take most of your practice exams. Exactly how many you should do is what I'm gonna get into later. But you wanna do the bulk work between now and like the end of Thursday, maybe a little bit on Friday. On Friday, you wanna do a little bit of last minute work. Maybe watch our cramming live stream that we have on YouTube and go over one or two sectors. And that's it. Because you don't wanna tire yourself out. You don't wanna burn yourself out. I've seen a lot of students that have just, that have done too much work on Friday and even like spent, they've, st they've sp stayed up like until midnight or even beyond just watching our videos even and trying to learn strategies or doing a practice exam and then they sleep through their exam or if they wake up then they feel like a zombie so you don't want to do that the night before your exam go to sleep at a normal time put in an appropriate amount of work not in like me again make sure it's your lightest day that's what i would that's my honest recommendation when i've done that for myself over the course of my five act exams that i took when i made my friday a little bit lighter it was easier on me the next day okay especially after a long week of work and practice exams and whatnot so do not overwork yourself the night before. You might sleep through the exam, you might wake up like a zombie, or you're just gonna feel burnt out and tired, okay? Don't do that to yourself. So those are the three don'ts. Now I wanna get into the three do's, the things that you should actually be doing to make sure that you're actually making progress 
and you know what you're doing on top of just avoiding the things that I already mentioned. The first thing is take one to two full exams this week. Now that's assuming that you want to, uh, like, you know, if you're in the case of you want to improve each section a little bit, like about the same. If you're focused on a particular section, then in, you, what you, in this case, what you want to do is ideally maybe for, even forget about the other sections that you're already doing well on. But let's say you just want to improve reading and science. Instead of doing like uh, one section of each or one practice exam from each section, you could just do like one reading and science every day or one reading exam a day and then a science the next or something like that so you're focusing on the sections you need again this is different for every student but on average for you one to two uh, practice sections per day over the course of this week will get you to that one to two full exams over the course of the week that you want so one to two per day sections uh, that'll get you to about one to two full exams by the end of the week just those numbers you can keep in mind again this is a this is just averages you don't have to stick to that it, a lot of students ask for like a study plan a number if that's the number that you want or if you if you want a number then that's what i'll say for you on average okay some days you might do more some days you might not do anything all right next thing is do try different strategies experiment with different ways of timing yourself experiment with different ways of skimming of reading of uh, just experiment with different ways of doing different things. So this applies especially for reading. So for example, there's different ways to read a passage on reading. There's different ways to time yourself on reading. There's different ways to time yourself on science. You need to find a way that works for you. There's also different ways to annotate. We have videos that demonstrate this and how it looks like to annotate and what different things you should look for. You need to find a balance of what to look for, what not to look for, what ways to read, what not to read, and see what works for you and apply that in a way that works for you, right? Um, I could go through all those things here, like just as an example, like for reading, you can do an approach of skimming everything. You can do an approach of reading everything in depth. You can do an approach of reading the first paragraph in depth and then skimming everything else and then reading the last paragraph in depth. Or you can do what I like to do, and I, again, I'm, I'm going over these very like, very quickly because I don't have like 12 minutes to spend on this specific topic. We have other videos that go over this and same for like the different science timing methods. We have different videos that go over these. I'll link them below, okay? But if you want, like if, you, if you're looking for a different ways to read, the method that I like the best is where you kind of randomly pick and choose sentences to skim and uh, read in depth or even skip. Right, And I further explain this in the videos that I just mentioned, so make sure you check out the links in the description if you want to see the videos about the different ways to skim or to time yourself on reading or science respectively, okay? And you, again, my point here isn't just to tell you the strategies, it's to tell you that you need to experiment with them. The strategies are great, but if you don't experiment and see which one works best for you, you're gonna find yourself in a weird situation like, oh, I'm not really comfortable with this. Does this strategy really work? The strategy works, most likely. It's just that you haven't tried it out yet. And this comes back to the thing that I talked about before, where you don't wanna do a complete 180 the night before the exam or right before the test, because you haven't tried different things and you haven't experimented. Um, so make sure you experiment. You still have a week left, that's still a good amount of time. If you take one or two practice sections every day uh, for those sections that you want, or just overall, you'll get a few chances to experiment with different strategies for different sections to see what works best for you and what doesn't, okay? So make sure that you experiment and see what you like, see what you don't like, all right? And the last thing that I wanna say, and this is probably the most important for English and math, um, the thing is you want to uh, so you want to review the mistakes that you've made on your past exams, as well as review the mistakes that you're gonna to continue to make on your next couple practice tests. This will just help you make sure that you are keeping those mistakes fresh in your head so you know not to make them again. English and math are very repetitive in terms of the skills that you see, especially for the easier questions. So uh, just to avoid those silly mistakes and uh, the concept errors, make sure that you review the mistakes that you're making so that you don't make those same mistakes again and again and again and again. That's gonna limit your progress, that's gonna limit your improvement. Just look over your exams. It doesn't take long. It, it's just a matter of looking at the questions you got wrong and just perhaps re-answering them. Maybe like doing it once on the actual test that you took it in and then doing it a few days later. Again, that's it. That's all there is to it. It's not too much here. It's not a ton of work. It's just a good way to review, uh, especially if you run out of practice exams that you have access to, all right? That's basically it. If you need any more help, any more strategies, any more uh, discussion or one-on-one -on -one advice, then we have tutoring that's linked below on our website. That is, even if you're cramming for the ACT in one week, we can still help you out with tutoring. Um, a lot of students are enrolled in our cramming tutoring plan. So um, for sure, check that out if you need any help. If you need any tutoring for t exams later, like February or anything like that, we have lots of packages for that as well. And lots of students find our online content really helpful on our website. So feel free to check that out if you have any other questions or you are interested in prepping with us. That's it for me. If you have any questions about anything, leave them in the comments below. We'd love to answer and uh, best of luck while prepping, all right? See ya.